Welcome inside episode 691 of the Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains and the Ottawa Senators earned their first shutout of the season, a 3-0 victory against the lowly last place Anaheim Ducks. But it wasn't all positives, unfortunately, Ross, as Tim Stutzla was seen wearing a sling. It seems like he's going to be out for a while. Also, Tyler Mott was injured in this game. Yes, DJ Smith did speak to the media this morning. We'll have an update on that and more. This is the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators Podcast. Thank you for making Locked On Senators your first listen on this Tuesday, December 13th. We are free and available on all platforms, including on YouTube, where the best way you can help the show grow is to like every video by clicking the thumbs up, Leave a comment as well and subscribe to the Locked On Senators channel. The road to 5,000 continues. And if you haven't been aware of the postcast, we do that after each and every Ottawa Senators game. So it's best to not only subscribe, but hit that notification bell so you know when the postcast goes live. Of course, we're your home for daily Ottawa Senators content Monday through Friday. And Pilsy, there is never a dull day in Sensland. We could be talking about the six two and one record over their last nine games. But instead we have to start with the concern around Tim Stutzla. Unfortunately, that is the biggest story of a three, nothing win over the Anaheim ducks. And this is a tough play Ross, because I know Leeson gets the interference penalty on it, but I don't think it was a particularly malicious uh, hit or any intent to injure anything like that. He just kind of rubs out uh, Tim Stutzla along the boards and Timmy's arm gets stuck in between uh, Leeson's body and the boards and it pushes, it pushes, and then there's no more room left to give. And that's a serious injury as Timmy wastes no time holding his arm up, not letting it kind of hold its own weight. And he skates right to the bench and right to the dressing room and he did not come back. So... Things are not looking good for the Ottawa Senators up the middle of the ice, Ross. An area that we kind of said at the start of the season was one of their biggest strengths. It really felt like it. And now Josh Norris, although skating, and there's kind of a a positive spin is that Josh Norris, he thinks kind of January, but you don't want to put a firm timetable on it with the extent of that injury. But with Tim Stutzla, it wasn't DJ Smith this morning. It was Shane Pinto that confirmed that it's a shoulder saying, you just can't make it up. Pinto missing all of last season with a shoulder injury. Josh Norris missing time with a shoulder injury. Hell, even Ridley Gregg at the World Juniors yeah. with a shoulder injury. Like, this team seems cursed, and it's it's just really unfortunate. But again, DJ Smith used the word if a lot when describing the potential for being without their young superstar in the lineup. So if, 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 but... Probably not tomorrow night, right? Like, there's no chance he's going to be put into a position. And it sucks because not only him, but Montreal is going to be without Cole Caulfield, it looks like, who took an absolutely ferocious hit from Trevor Lewis in their game last night. Those two kids have been going head-to-head last year, even uh, during the COVID-shortened season when it was nine or ten games against Montreal. Like, you want the best players to play, especially on two teams that don't have a whole lot of them. So it's unfortunate that... We're in this predicament and that Ottawa's even in a worse spot. They're missing their top right-hand defenseman. They're missing their right shot defenseman on the third pair. If you want Jacob Bernard Docker in that spot, they're missing their top line center, their second line center, both wingers from the third line. If Tyler Mott's out and Matthew Joseph, but like DJ Smith said as well, next man up mentality. Yeah. And unfortunately, like DJ says, nobody's feeling sorry for you, you know, This is the NHL. Everybody's got injuries. But like you said, it's just too bad. Finally, the Sens are going up against the Habs the first time all year. And Timmy's out and Cole Caulfield's out. Like, no fan base wants that. We're not not confirmed on Cole Caulfield yet, but didn't look look great. I'd be surprised if he plays next game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Because both Ottawa and Montreal fans want those guys going head-to-head so they can kind of have the measuring stick. and, And, I mean... 
neither of these teams uh, really is in the thick of it now, although Montreal is playing pretty well. So the win and loss isn't so much the the test here. It's how do these teams match up up against each other skill wise. And if these two teams are fully healthy, it's a good battle. And unfortunately, we're not going to get that. Throw the standings out of the window when these two teams get together. That's the old saying, but Pilsy breaking moves as we have uh, five minutes ago. Cole Caulfield will travel with the team to Ottawa and should be available tomorrow. Literally five minutes ago from when we're recording. So Ottawa, Well, I could have told you that, Ross. I could have told you what the French uh, sentence said there. But I bet. Pas bon. <laughs> but for, it's pas bon for, for Ottawa right now with Tim Stutzla, I would say 99.18% just to throw his jersey number in there that he doesn't forget to play tomorrow. And we're just hoping it's not like a month, two-month thing. And Ottawa's got quite the busy schedule up until yes. and and up till Christmas. So you're just like, okay, what's what's the, the deal here? Who's going to step into that position? DJ Smith also saying that he's going to keep that Pinto, Debrinket, and Batherson line together. And I'm happy to hear that because they're starting to click offensively. Drake Batherson up to 10 points in his last seven games, I believe it is. I could be off by one. Debrinket gets two goals last night. That must have been a good feeling for him after he said he's in bed sick all day. He wasn't sure what was going on. He gets the two goals, and again, grain of salt. The Anaheim Ducks are a horrible hockey team. I don't often say that about NHL teams. They all get paid the same. Holy, and we've seen some bad hockey over the last five years of doing this, Billsy. The Anaheim Ducks are an awful hockey team. Yeah. But it's a win. You can only win the games in front of you, right? So that's what fans are able to do. And that's the thing. Like, if if the Senators go up against any other team and have Timmy and Tyler Mott out early on in the game, you're probably looking at a different result, uh, especially not shutting a team out. But the Anaheim Ducks are the Anaheim Ducks, and they're going to have to move forward here. And it's crazy. Rook Chartier is brought up, and now he's going to be looking at some decent time in the NHL. Uh, DJ Smith even said it. He's going to play a big role, and we're going to need him here. So it's a good thing Rook Chartier, at least, has been lighting it up in Belleville. He has some NHL experience Almost had his second goal up against the Ducks last night, too. But, Ross, I can't believe the only news we had today was that Dylan Hetherington was sent back down to Belleville. Like, they don't have enough healthy guys right right now. So, I don't know what they're going to do. They have to call up a guy for the game up against Montreal, unless Tyler Mott is looking like he'll draw back into the lineup. But I'm not so sure about that. Right, because... Dylan Gambrell will play. He's the one healthy scratch they had in in last night's game. And Belleville doesn't play until Saturday, the game that I'm going to be on the call with Footy for in Manitoba. So it's not like, hey, Ottawa plays tomorrow. Let's get Hetherington some extra reps. He's only sitting on on the sidelines when he's up here anyways. I'm assuming Belleville's not leaving to Winnipeg until Friday. So it's probably just a practice day in Belleville, you would Mm -hmm. imagine. So, yeah, really confusing, but... Good news in a sense, if it does mean that Tyler Mott is going to be good to go tomorrow. I mean, definitely, yeah. If, if you can have Tyler Mott, uh, that's surely good news in a team that's as injury uh, stricken as the Ottawa Senators. And and his kind of looked like maybe he just got a little banged up. It didn't look like anything too serious. He kind of slips and falls on uh, on the banana peel out there as he's getting some contact, and he falls right on his back. So we're hoping that that's just something. Hey, let him take a couple days off, and he's back in here. But I don't know. I I really think it's it's time you bring up one of the kids, like either Cooker or Sokolov. I've made I've made my case. I think it should be Sokolov, but I think it's time. There's so many injuries here. Guys are going to be out weeks, probably. Like Matthew Joseph, I think is still another two weeks till he's back. So I, I think it's a good time to bring these guys up here. Sorry though, Ross, as that means you're going to have a depleted Belleville uh, Senators team to call up against the Manitoba News. <laughs> hey, my silver lining though is that Ottawa's here next Tuesday, so I'll get to see them one way or another. But unfortunately, looks like Timmy will be out of lineup. I just I need to see Jake Sanderson play live. I mean, he was in the lineup at the home opener though. But after my my time last uh, last winter going down to North Dakota and then him being out of the lineup last minute and then him not making the trip to Winnipeg in the preseason after DJ Smith promised us on this yeah. show <laughs> the North Dakota kids were coming to Winnipeg. But hey, I, we got that home opener, so there's that. But I honestly, and, and this is also kind of where I'm coming from, is our conversation with DJ at the start of the year. I think Jake Lucini's the next guy up. I think that they're yeah, going to say, true. Hey, we need a veteran, a guy who's maybe got a little more experience, a guy who, like Igor, you're going to, like, 
he'd be a guy where if you shift your route to center, like you would want, you need, basically you need Igor playing with skilled players. Yes. Uh, right. So you're not going to call Igor up and no offense. You're not going to put him with Casty and Kelly. Like, he, no, it doesn't he, make sense. It makes no sense. So for, for him to be effective, I think you need him to be with a perfect passer. Like for me, he, like he would be perfect with Timmy. Right to, to yeah, have him yeah. kind of feed him pucks and and clear open space with his his uh, agility and stick handling. So I, I think that my like I would love to see Igor, and I'll put my selfishness aside. I think it's better for Igor to be in Ottawa than it is for him to come to Winnipeg. Even though last time he was here, yeah, I got that stick from his uh, broken shootout. Uh, yep. Signed that for me. That was nice. But hey, whether it's him, whether it's Lucini, I think those are probably the two guys you're looking at because Lucini's up to 23 points in 24 games. Oh just yeah, one point behind Igor and Rourke Jarte, obviously the team leader in goals. So he got the call up. Of course, we would be banging on the table. You know, we love Angus uh, as a rookie with 17 points in 24 games, seventh in rookie scoring right now in the entire American Hockey League. But I, I think they go with the more veteran. Uh, 27 year old in in Jake Lucini. I think that's probably yeah. the call. But again, let let's see and and let's also cross our fingers that we have at least Tyler Mott back in the lineup and that Tim Stutzla is not out long term. But we got lots more to cover from this game. And Pilsy Team USA World Junior Camp is still ongoing. However, the other three Senators have all already made their teams. Yep. Tyler Boucher is the lone. Bubble player left, and Pillsy, I got what I believe to be good news Ooh. on that front. All that coming up right after a quick word from our friends at Shawarma Palace. You know I love Shawarma Palace like family, and they treat you like family when you go see them at Shawarma Palace. Today's episode is brought to you by Shawarma Palace. You can go dine at any of their nine Ottawa locations. They are also huge huge Ottawa Senators fans. So not only are you supporting a local institution since 1997, these guys have been around. They established themselves the year that Ottawa first made the playoffs as a franchise. That's how long they've been around for. And they are absolutely beloved. I saw a tweet actually, Pilsy. This was absolutely wild at first, but then when you think about grocery store prices, it doesn't (laughs) seem so wild anymore. It was a radio personality in Ottawa. Did you see this tweet? Yeah. I, it's Mary Ann Iveson. She says, I did the math. It's officially more economical <laughs> to buy a mixed shawarma plate from Shawarma Palace every couple days than shop at Loblaws. And that's absolutely true. Because yep. if you've ever been to Shawarma Palace, you know that it's not just the quality of the meat and the platter, which I love. I know you're a big rap guy, but it's the quantity. These people do not skimp on portions. I've had people in the replies being like, hey, My family goes to Shawarma Palace because they have, like, in the window, like, I obviously go, I put the horse blinders on. I'm like, chicken shawarma platter, give me two extra garlic sauces. I need it right now. But you can go in. They've got, like, all these different kinds of of sides and and really cool Lebanese uh, delicacies. So you can go in there and you can load up and be like, hey, there's my grocery shopping for the week. So check them out at any of Ottawa's nine locations right now. We love Shawarma Palace. They are not only the sponsor Locked On Senders, they're with the Sen. So make sure you're writing to them on social media, letting them know when you go eat Shawarma Palace and let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. We love Shawarma Palace because they're family and they're family to the entire city of Ottawa. So shout out Shawarma Palace. Thank you for being a part of our show and make sure that you're paying it along because supporting them is supporting us. So go check them out at Shawarma Palace. You're among royalty and game days taste better at Shawarma Palace. Take the Habs fan in your life to Shawarma Palace, but don't be afraid to smear a little garlic sauce on that toilet bowl logo. It's all about our friends at Shawarma Palace. Love it. Love it. Today's episode is also brought to you by our friends over at Bet Online. Guys, this is interesting times to be betting on hockey, especially Ottawa Senators hockey. Finally, cashed in a couple shekels on the Sens getting that 3 0 win up against the Ducks. But there's so much more than just hockey at Bet Online. You can find football. Playoffs are getting real close for football. All these games matter. Basketball, the wraps are starting to heat up here. It's baseball off season, so maybe start checking in on baseball futures. And do not forget that the World Cup is still going on. And it's semifinals time. Game at 2 Eastern today. So probably as you're watching it, it's happening. So go to betonline.net and You don't have to bet on just the Senators. We got an interesting game tonight. Vegas versus Winnipeg. 
Dude, it is winner is first place in the in the Western Conference in huge. terms of percent. huge game. And Winnipeg right now, the home favorite at minus one thirty. I know everyone's probably like, oh, I'm taking the dogs. I'm taking Vegas. No Jack Eichel. So use that. I'm going Winnipeg puck line. You've got Connor Hellebuck already being a Vesna uh, trophy candidate this early in the season. I'm going at betonline.ag plus 195 for the puck line Ooh. on the Winnipeg Jets. That's what I'm hitting. It's bet online. It's where the game starts. <laughs> All right, Pilsy. It almost feels like it's come so soon. The World Juniors are already here. Just months after Canada won gold. Again. Not a big deal. And shout out to Zach Ostapchuk. Representing Canada. Scott Wheeler says he could even wear an A. Scott Wheeler would wonder if he would ever get out of the AHL in his career. But I think Zach Ostapchuk has certainly taken strides in the right direction. So Zach Ostapchuk has made Team Canada. That was announced yesterday. So shout out to Zach Ostapchuk joining Thomas Amara, who wasn't officially on Team Czechia, but he was there last year as an eight, a 17-year-old. He's going to be there. Look yep. for him, hopefully, to be on that top pair with David Yurchek, six overall pick awesome. for the Columbus Blue Jackets. But Pilsy, and we know our boy, yeah. Austin Pedersen. Pistol Pete. There. Pistol Pete. But speaking of friends of the show, Corey Prodman, who was nice enough to join us twice this summer. Yep. Really good guy. He's at Team USA camp right now. Not only did he say, hey, Tyler Boucher looks pretty good. He looks pretty good out there yesterday, right? We heard that in the summer. Didn't make the team. Team USA practicing the power play this morning. Tyler Boucher on the second unit. To me, that's a pretty good sign. Yeah, love seeing that. And I think he's going to be the guy that... uh, He might want to text Brady Kachuk for some tips on how to play power play in front of the net and uh, be in Brady's office because Boucher is going to be a guy that's going to cause a lot of chaos in front of that net. Well, it looks like he's in that, uh, like the Drake Batherson spot. Like, so you've got the guy right in front of the net. I think that's Dylan Duke, who I think we profiled uh, in 2020. Yeah, we like Dylan Duke, yeah. Yeah, he was one of those like honey badger type players as well. But if if Boucher, because we know that he can pop out in the bumper spot and he's got a pretty lethal release. So hopefully we see that. But when you look at, at who he's on there with, like Chaz Lucius, of course, who when, when Pierre Dorian said from the U.S. national team. <laughs> oh, okay. We all thought that's where he was going. Chaz Lucius, that's got to be it. Well, he's up there. He is, though, also in a non-contact jersey we should be made aware. I'm sure he'll be ready to go in two weeks' time uh, before there. He's actually playing with the Manitoba Moose this year, so I won't get to see him talk about a watered-down game. Uh, he's, he's obviously been assigned... To team USA, uh, Brad Lambert probably as well. So it's gonna be real watered down. Um, that to say, love seeing him there and Nodak, Jackson Blake on the left side there as well, who we also were pretty high on uh, in the draft. Carolina got to snag him. Lane Hudson, my five star guy, until he put on the Habs jersey, <laughs> he's on the back there. But good news with Tyler Boucher being with a lot of these guys look like locks, right? Like Snuggerud, we profiled. Oh, yeah. He was a, a first-round pick. Rucker McGrory went to Winnipeg at 14th overall. Like These are all pretty high draft picks. Hell, we didn't even mention Luke Hughes, fourth overall pick on Jeez. this. And uh, Cutter Gauthier, who before Ottawa traded for Alex Dabrinkit, everybody was up saying that that guy is a future Ottawa senator. So good news here as our boy Tyler Boucher makes his push to get on to that team, USA roster all right Pilsy any thoughts uh, as we lead into the tournament like obviously go Canada go but it'll be nice for four cents prospects at the tourney yep yeah you love to see it the more the merrier um <laughs> well to an extent right because it's usually the teams who are drafting the highest who have the most players yeah but, I mean look at Winnipeg how many Winnipeg prospects did you just r- rattle off there like you yeah, can a be a good drafting team and still be a good team in the NHL um I'm I'm just so happy we're back to our regular scheduled World Juniors. Like, I, there's so much to be said about, especially as uh, as we get older, Ross, and we get into the routine of the calendar year of sports. Like, it feels wrong when we have Boxing Day and the World Juniors hasn't started. There's no big game on New Year's Eve. Like, 
that's part of my schedule as I move along in the year. So it's nice that that's back to normal. But I don't know. I'll have to take a deeper look at all the other teams. But it just seems to me like this is Canada's tournament to lose. Like when you have guys like Shane Wright, Connor Bedard, uh, Zach Ostapchuk to throw him in the ring with those guys. Um, Dilly could be second overall. It's it's just hard to see this team falling apart. I, I think where we got to look is the goaltending uh, for Team Canada. That was kind of the shaky issue, and seems to always be the shaky issue for Canada. So this Perfect. is going to be an interesting tournament. Well, let's uh, let's gear up uh, as the World Juniors come closer, Ross, like we usually do. Maybe get Wheeler on, maybe Prom, and some of those guys that can give us a little extra insight on uh, some of the the whole rosters of these squads. Yeah, I love that. We'll do a World Junior preview. I, yeah. I like that. Put that in my notes right here. Ba, 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 ba. All right, coming up on the other side of the break, how good have the Ottawa Senators been since Ooh. U.S. Thanksgiving? Typically, we hear, hey, U.S. Thanksgiving, if you're not in the playoffs, you may as well just pack your bags and <laughs> head home for the year. Well, nobody talks about how good you've been since U.S. Thanksgiving. So just a coincidence that the Senators are 6-2-1 and one since U.S. Thanksgiving. Weird. But we'll tell you where that ranks in the league. And we'll put a bow on last night's game because, of course, you and Martian had the postcast. I got a standout as well. So stay tuned for all that coming up on the other side. But, Pilsy, this episode is brought to you by another one of our friends, or are we just hitting a quick break here? We're just hitting a quick break, moving on along. You know what I will say, though? We do have a great contest going on by one of our other favorite nice. sponsors, Farm 2 Fork with the number two. Farm 2 Fork to meat and seafood delivery premium service. We'll tell you about it more on the show, but tomorrow night we are doing a giveaway. It's a big one. For thanks, or sorry, Christmas. I was talking about Thanksgiving. Same type of meal, though. Christmas yep. dinner for four on them. Deliver, like right to your. It doesn't get much all- better, honestly. <laughs> $100 value. All you have to do is head over to Instagram, lockedon.senators, follow the prompts, follow the accounts, tag two friends, and you will be in the draw. We'll call that on the postcast tomorrow night. All right, stay tuned. More Locked On Senators coming up right after this. All right, Pilsy, it's a busy time for the Ottawa Senators. The yes. Montreal Canadiens come to the CTC tomorrow night. Then they've got two nights off. And take a deep breath because it gets pretty wild from there. First, the Sens head to Detroit for their first of three meetings yep. against the Red Wings before the end of the calendar year. There's only two weeks left in the calendar. <laughs> then they go to Minnesota for a matinee. Back-to-back matinees this weekend. And then they're coming to Winnipeg, where I'm not going to say this again. So listen up, all you all you wagerers out there. The Senators, in regular season play, have won the last nine games where I have boots on the ground. Yeah, yeah, that's intense. Nine. And like the reason I say regular season is Ottawa brought like the Allen Americans to, to Winnipeg in, in the preseason this year. Yeah. And it was still a two-goal game. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely when Ross has boots on the ground, act accordingly. Adjust yourselves accordingly, I mean. Yeah, like Derek Broussard was on a PTO and was wearing an A at this preseason game. That just kind of told you where the roster was at. That to say, yeah. we should give a shout-out. Happy birthday to Mad Sogard, yeah, friend of the guy, show. Mads. Hey, he came back with a vengeance. 32 saves on 33 shots against Laval. Three for three in the shootout. Slow and steady wins the race with Matt Sogard. I think he's going to need a couple more years in the AHL, but the package is there. Six foot seven, 200 pounds. He just needs to figure out a little consistency. And he, he's got, when he's on his game, man, there, there's not many goalies that can play as well and move as quick and, and be as sturdy as he is in the net. So shout out, Matt. Happy birthday, buddy. Absolutely. And and yeah, I want to see the Ottawa Senators give their prize goalie prospect the proper development path here. So there's no rush. Let's keep uh, some veteran goalies stocked up. Antoine Bebo is looking like a better and better signing as we go on here. Mando, speaking of the Allen Americans, he's down there and he's doing really well so far. So you'd love to see that for all the attendees in the uh, organization here. So definitely with all the injuries that Belleville has, Getting Mad Sogard back into the mix is a massive, massive boost because he can mop up a lot of those issues, hopefully. He's only allowed six goals in his last four games. 
936 save percentage. So nice. keep it up. Adds 22 years old. For a goalie, that's like 16. Right, like goalies Honestly. develop later; they need more time. So, shout out Mad's long, successful career coming up for him. Hey, speaking of success, pulling up on YouTube here. These are the NHL standings since U.S. Thanksgiving, Thursday, November twenty fourth. So, we're at like a nine game sample size, which just so happens to be when the Sens started winning games. Funny how I chose that day uh, to work out. Yeah, really, really weird. Now, the only sure. teams who have more points than the Ottawa Senators are the Pittsburgh Penguins, the Toronto Maple Leafs, who, yeah. The higher they go, the harder they fall. So well, that's yeah. all right. The Leafs are 7-0-1 and in their last eight. Okay, Real shame if they lose tonight to Anaheim on the second half back-to-back. <laughs> Real shame. I'm going to put $5 on Anaheim, just out of principle. The Leafs have the worst record against teams when they're minus 200 or better favorites. So there's no question they play down to their competition. Okay, Winnipeg, right. 14 points, 7-2-0. That's why it's going to be such a good game tonight against Vegas. I'm excited for that. Uh, Ottawa, 6-2-1, and one, tied with Washington, who was a team that was also kind of struggling. So yeah. interesting to see Washington up there. And then the Eastern Conference teams here, uh, Carolina, 5-0-2. Oh, they played two less games. So points percentage-wise, they're actually uh, second in the NHL behind Toronto over this span. And then Tampa. So that's the problem. Like these other teams that started slow, like Washington and Tampa, they're also starting to string together a lot of wins. Yeah, but I think Washington, it's going to be harder as it goes along here. Because I think Kemper may be injured here. So they're going to be relying on... Um, well, he's coming Charlie. back. Oh, he's coming back? Okay. He started skating. They put him on the IR, so he's out a week. But he started skating. And Nicholas Backstrom started skating. And Tom Wilson started skating. So they're Okay, actually- well, scratch that. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're getting better before they're getting worse. Never mind there. But it's interesting to look at this and see only two Western teams here. The Eastern yeah. Conference is tough these days yeah well here let's pull up the actual eastern conference standings right now because uh i think we're, we're at a point where i know the Sens are winning games but we do have to point out that they're winning games they're not really moving a whole lot not- hey they're not in last place anymore at least they're tied for last place and nhl has them above the sabers in the atlantic division so you'll love to see that yeah, like I wonder how they how did they decide that? Like Ottawa and Buffalo have split the season series so far. They each have one regulation win. They both played the same amount of games. They both and the have, Sabres have a better goal differential. That is weird. Right. But like they both have twelve wins, two uh, extra point, like loser loser points, loser losses. So I I just find even it alphabetically the Sabres have the edge there. So I don't know what's going on. <laughs> they have the edge alphabetically. <laughs> right. I just can't wait till when is it March where they're. They're uh, rocking the goat head jersey against Ottawa's whites. Like that's yeah. going to be an all-time Classic. jersey matchup. Just a nostalgic matchup here as well. So the Ottawa Senators sit seventh in the Eastern Conference wild card standings. Not in the Eastern Conference, the wild card standings. So long way to go. But I'm eyeing the Florida Panthers, Pelosi. I'm eyeing the Florida Panthers and I'm eyeing the Montreal Canadiens. And I'm saying that if Ottawa, right? We, we just went through their schedule, their upcoming schedule, right? So... Montreal at home, yep. Red Wings on the road, Wild on the road, Jets on the road, Washington at home, Detroit at home, Bruins at home, Capitals on the road, Wings on the road. Wow. That's a lot of games and a lot of Eastern Conference games, especially in that last week before the uh, the calendar flips. Ottawa, for me to be like bought in at like a miracle run, because it will take a miracle, right? There's three points game games being just handed out. Right, they need to be ahead of Montreal and Florida, January first, and then yeah. I'll start, I'll start drinking the Kool Aid if they're that. And I mean, with the two games against Washington, you look at them being six points ahead of Ottawa right now. If Ottawa takes all four points and doesn't give Washington any in those meetings, which I think is a, a tough ask, Ottawa Definitely. already beat Washington once. It'd be tough to go three and zero against them, but all of a sudden you're only two points behind there, and that's all in in the control of the Ottawa Senators. So. I mean, it's a huge amount, and I, I kind of feel like I'm buying into the Kool-Aid just bringing it up. But I'm saying, and I said this to someone on Twitter, had a laugh about it. I'm saying there's a chance that there's a chance. And that's all we're hoping for. Like we said, we want them to be in meaningful games. So if they're in a position where they're two teams out of a wild card spot, that's kind of what you're hoping for. So if they're able to bounce Montreal and Florida and they're in the mix with the Caps and the Red Wings to battle with the New York teams for that wild card spot, that's fine. Just give them give them a little sniff 
of playoff action so they can get motivated and that the fans have something to look forward to here. But man, you, you listed all of those upcoming games and the yeah. opponents they have. If Timmy is not there for those, oh my God, it's right. uh, like six, six of the games that are coming up are against Detroit, Washington, and yeah. Montreal. There they couldn't be a worse time for him to get injured. Directly Brutal. at the Ottawa Senators. Directly ahead. Now, we also can spin zone this. Alex Dabrinkit starting to heat up. He is well over a point per game against his hometown team, the Detroit Red Wings. So hopefully he keeps that up. He is. I'll pull up his numbers when we do the game preview ahead of this weekend uh, with Detroit. But his numbers are absolutely ridiculous against the Red Wings. So hopefully yeah. that can continue on. And also, we're of course praying for the best of help. For uh, health for Tim Stutzla because guy is a complete superstar. He's he's playing out of his mind right now. But we got to give some stick taps to last night's game and the Ottawa Senators' resilience. With Tim Stutzla only played two minutes in yeah. that game, like he was out at the start at the start of the or the midway point. They hadn't the- even scored the second goal yet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So before the midway mark, then and then Tyler Mott only played six and a half minutes. So this was a true definition of win as a team. And to me, that only speaks volumes about what's going on inside the locker room. We get little glimpses of it. And shout out, the Sen social media team is so on point. Their video production team, the Wade Redden video, five minutes. Like they turn that around for like just to upload it and export all that stuff is probably a couple hours. They were they must have been up all night putting that all together because yep. the quality was all unbelievably well done. So not only that, but we get the glimpses right. The goggles were handed out to Alex uh, to to the cat. The cat yep. get it. Alex and Frankie got the goggles. Yeah, he was one away from getting the cat in the hat trick. Um, but right now we'll just have to settle for that. And then how about Wade Redden reading the starting lineups before the game? That was awesome. And man. Yep. It just, I mean, further goes to show, like, what a class act Travis Hamannick is. You see, like, all the other guys are dapping up Redden as he goes off. Hamannick, like, takes his glove off, gives him, like, a proper handshake. A couple of Brandon Wheat Kings legends going uh, oh, going yeah. there. But great to see uh, Wade Redden around. And all in all, just a team effort. Eh? When you look back at that, again, caveat, the Anaheim Ducks. <laughs> yeah, let's keep that clear. Yeah. But still, still good. To, you got to beat teams in front of you. And it's, it's good to see Ottawa kind of come together. And Alex DeBrink, we were just talking about him. Three's a streak. And the Senators, even though they're playing well, they have not been able to string three wins together. Two wins, loss. Two wins, overtime loss. Two wins, what do you have now? Not, not since the home opener stretch. They haven't got uh, anything more than that. And... I, I'm really inspired by Debrinka getting some goals and getting some points, Ross, but I'm still concerned at his fear of shooting the puck. Like, he, even those goals, like, obviously, a wide open cage on the power play, you're going to get that. But it's a tip on the second goal, a great tip still. Then his goal in the previous game was a pass on a two on one. Like, he's still not having the confidence to just rip one. So, until he does that, I'm going to be cautiously optimistic about the floodgates opening, but. He's producing and playing well in other ways. So that's what you like to see. You can't, you're not always going to have it. So how do you find a way to contribute in other ways? Dabrinkit's doing that. He certainly is. Any uh, other final thoughts on that game? Because we have two more points to get to, to wrap up today's show. One is Gary Bettman providing an update on the sale of the Ottawa Senators as all the owners, the board of governors are meeting in Florida. And also it's the 17th annual Melnick skate for kids. So we're going to touch on that. But Pilsy, I got one more note on the game. Do you? No, if you want uh, my full analysis on the game, check out the postcast. So I'll just pass the mic over uh, back to you, Ross. First, remind me, you had Cam Talbot. Who did Martian have for his standout? Debrinket. Okay. So I'm going to go with Claude Giroux, not only with the two assists, but he was put up on that top power play unit where a lot of people felt he should have been. But to jump in without practicing with that unit and to get that beautiful seam pass through. So good. He's unbelievable. We brought up, I think, last week that he's second in the National Hockey League since 2009. Since 2009 in power play points. So he's obviously a, a veteran and a guy who's who's seen it all in terms of players that he's playing with. And the Ducks' penalty kill is 66% on the season. The Senators have scored five. Are they had two last night? Yeah, two last two. night. Yep. Five power play goals against the Ducks in two meetings. Like, 
the Sens power play is red hot. They're 36% since November 22nd, but the Ducks penalty kill is absolutely horrid. That to say, Giroux being able to step in and play as much as he did. You know, he's second in the National Hockey League in faceoff percentage. I mean, that shouldn't really surprise based on how he's been over the last like decade, but Cool to see that he's right back up to his old tricks there. Two assists, yeah, 56% in the circle. Played 19 minutes, three shots on goal. I loved what I saw in uh, in Claude Giroux's game. Like so I want to give you a little thing. And the other thing I wanted to bring up, and I think you mentioned it briefly on the postcast, but how about Brady yelling at the Ducks bench yep. after they went after, um, after Brandstrom and said, Sam Carrick, I don't even know who you are. I'm not coming after you, but if you guys want to keep running around, I'm going after Zegris because he's the only guy worth a damn on your team, and he's going to feel it. So if you guys want to be responsible for him, then keep going. Do what you do. And nothing else happened after that. That's the thing. If you're going to be a last-place team and be chippy and try and like you're like hurting guys after the whistle and cross-checking Rourke Chartier in the face? like oh, was, that, was that Rourke Chartier? No, I th- I was... Uh, no, was Zegris. It- cross-check Rourke Chartier oh. after the, the goal, yeah. the no-goal, goal, no-goal. Goal. Um, incident. Um, he just goes and hits him right in the face. Like, if you're gonna do that, get ready. It's coming. The Ottawa Senators have guys that are not afraid to do that. And oh, yeah, who's one of those guys? The captain of their team will stand up for that. So, you love to see that from the Ottawa Senators. Anaheim doesn't even have a captain, do they? They do not. Yeah, well. I don't think they really deserve to have one right now anyways, but that's all. Um, that's all good fun. Uh, Sens get the win. Three, nothing was the <laughs> score. Uh, if you missed the game last night, go check out the postcast two goals for Alex to break it and shout out Parker Kelly must have felt good for him to score his first goal of the season. Also had a game high six or tied with Simon Benoit, a guy who I never need to see play hockey ever again. Six hits led the Ottawa Senators. Eric Brandstrom with seven blocked shots yeah. as well. The Senators' decor as a whole all blocked a ton of shots. As a whole, they blocked math guy, math guy, 13, 16 shot blocks just on the back nice. end for the Ottawa Senators uh, with Branny leading the way. Branny and Martian pointed this out. Like when you're at ice level, he looks unbelievable. Yeah, he because you get to see the shiftiness. Like Ross, that's why when we were covering him in Belleville, yeah. man, we were so stoked. Like in the AHL, this guy was able to do whatever he wanted with the puck on his stick. And when you get to see it up close, you really uh, can appreciate his uh, his puck skills and his skating skills. Like he's able to, like Brady can do everything now. It seems except get points. Like he's. The breakout's good. He's defending better. He's putting his body on the line. He's not getting out muscled as easy as he was before. But just the points will not come for Eric Branson, unfortunately. It is. It is just. It's unfortunate, to say the least. But he's playing well. And on a third pair, you love yep. to see it. So, Definitely. Melnick State for Kids. It's an annual event around Christmas where underprivileged kids, he gets people to the to the to from the community in. Um, he buys skates, helmets, jerseys, pizza. That's awesome just to enjoy being on an NHL ice. Like this was one of Eugene Melnick's most positive legacies for the Ottawa Senators. The the team stays out after the skate here. I'll pull up a photo from, uh, from last year's and it's just so, or this isn't last year's cause Mark Stone's in the photo, but again, it's an annual tradition where they have all, it's just, it's amazing. And uh, there's a photo going around on social media this morning, Anna Melnick's there tying skates for one of the kids, wow. but you can see, it's just such a cool event, and, awesome. and it's the season for giving. It's the season for uh, for for you know helping others, and uh, it, it's definitely a day that everyone will always remember. Hey, look, you can actually see that's uh, that's Ann and Olivia right there. Hey, the two uh, the two owners of the team. <laughs> uh, right now, awesome. Yep. But yeah, super cool to, to see this initiative continue after Eugene Melnick's passing, and even after the sale of the team Pilsy, I hope this stays forever because it's a great initiative and a really cool way to connect with the yeah community. i agree i hope it continues too and ross like who knows maybe one of those kids has never skated before doesn't really know anything about hockey you get into this big arena you're on the ice there's play nhl players beside you and you're like hey i really like this hockey thing and then they get into hockey and it becomes a major game changer in their life whether it's a girl or or a young boy so that's what you love to see. It's something simple like that, that that doesn't cost the team anything, but it puts such a smile on those kids' face and uh, can have a really big impact. So that's what you love to see during this time. 
It certainly is. Now, with the discussion of Melnick, of course, it transitions nicely into the Ottawa Senators sale. And today, Gary Bettman and Bill Daly um, discussed the potential sale or impending. Yes, yeah. We know it's it's going to happen, but the impending sale of the Ottawa Senators. And on that note, the lawsuit is now settled over LeBreton Flats yes. with Trinity Developments. Remember? Five hundred million? No, I'm counterclaiming you for. It, it was uh, seven hundred million, then a counterclaim for a billion. Yeah. Well, glad that's yeah, no over. Kidding, no financial. Right? Uh, it seems like that was kind of a a little mess in aisle five that needed to be cleaned up before the supermarket. Yeah, could be sold. and uh, Brandon Pillar, not a lawyer, lawyer or legal expert. This really seemed like more of a personal thing than anything to do with businesses and organizations and franchises, right? Like that, like this really seemed like it was Melnick and Ruddy being very upset and uh, not really happy with how things were. Well, feeling yeah. wrong. Exactly. Feeling wrong. So now yeah. that that's no longer kind of the, the two sides here, I think it's just like, well, what like the, the motive here is lost and I think they were able to settle it. So that's a really good thing to see. I don't think that would have stopped a sale, but it would have been an obstacle the the new owners would have had to dealt with, unfortunately. So that's a very, very good sign. Gary Bettman says more than a dozen potential bidders have signed a non-disclosure agreement to view the Sens books as a part of the sale process. Does that mean we could have done it as well? Like, do we need any more financial backing or do we just sign an NDA? I'll sign it. I would love to take a peek under the under So, the Ross, uh, I actually do know about this. They talked about it on 32 Thoughts. Elliot Friedman said you had to put down a down payment. I think it was like, it's probably, it was it was hefty, like a little bit out of our budget. Um, Wait. I got a hundred nice, bucks. Nice. Well, I got my sends a uh, change change bin here. Can I see? Can I see? Because uh, yeah, can I see? you're not able just to open up the hood, and uh, not just anyone can take a look at those numbers. But the the thing. What if I have a check? But, but if the check doesn't clear for whatever it is, but like if I have the check, it says the number. I just want to see. Yeah, it bills. would be great. We'll we'll get that when uh, Dorian releases his book with the 112 page plan that him and Melna came up with uh, in Barbados. But the thing that I love about this is, remember when Bruce went on? Uh, he it was on a game broadcast and he said, "There's so much interest in the Sens, blah blah blah," and everyone clowned on him. Non Sens fans were like, "Oh yeah, sure there is." Are you kidding me? Of course there's interest in this team. Like. NHL teams don't go for sale very often, especially the capital of Canada the team is in. They're getting a new arena. Everything is looking good for this team. There's going to be a lot of interest, and I, I can't wait to see how this unfolds. And apparently, Bettman and Daly have told all in, like possible bidders that you got to include Ryan Reynolds in this, or it ne- at least it needs to be an option. So that is also a big sign, because I'm really into the Welcome to Wrexham uh, Netflix series, or maybe it's Disney Plus. I forget whichever series it is. Imagine they did something like that with the Senators, Ross. Like we could be a part of that show. It's possible. Like on on that show, Ross, they have like like hairdressers, uh, g- people that own the pub next door, guys that are just blue collar workers. They're on the show talking about the team. So it would just be fun to kind of show the NHL world how awesome this Sens community is. Yeah, it really is awesome. In the sense, data room should be open soon. Any hackers, please reach out in the DMs. I would like to find a way into that data room. But it's another step closer to the Ottawa Senators sale being finalized. And I love what you brought up there, that Ryan Reynolds should and most likely will be a part of whichever organization or bidder, I guess, is the proper Consortium. way to say it. Con- yeah. cons- Consortium. 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 I added an ism onto that one. There you go. It's all good. And it, it does feel like things are getting better. Of course, now the the new black cloud is Tim Stutzla's impending uh, diagnosis of his current injury. We'll tweet that out at Send Central as soon as we find anything out. I think we should probably know uh, by tomorrow at some point, at least some sort of update, as DJ Smith will likely speak to the media in the morning. We'll have that for you and a full game day preview. The Sens going up against yes. the Montreal Canadiens for the first time this year. But I'm actually glad it took this long because they played like 85 times in the preseason and rookie tournament. They played I'd in four different provinces. <laughs> like, it was crazy. Yeah, I've seen enough of that fan base. And 
Uh, I'm sure we'll get into the mud with them a little bit tomorrow night as one does. But for today, I think that's uh, that's about all we got, Pills, other than there's 12 or a dozen that have access to the data room, but it looks like there's going to probably be about three to four serious bidders for the Ottawa Senators. So we'll keep our, our eye on that. But any final thoughts on today's show? Final thoughts is I've already mentioned it a couple times, but just want to give uh, appreciation to all the listeners uh, out there that uh, continue to support us and don't don't let our name get rubbed through the mud without uh, bringing stuff up. Because, look, for the, it's it's a tough thing putting ourselves out there like this every single day, your team every day. And when you get people trying to paint your character and tell other people what you're like, I don't know. It, it just it grinds my gear. So it's really nice to see people that support the show that really know what's going on. They show us love. They show us support. And we're a part of this community too. I, I was saying, I was telling you and Martian the other day, I wasn't really having a great day. I wasn't feeling it. It was that Nashville game. And then we get into the postcast, the Sens win, and that just turned my day right around. So I just want to say thank you to everyone out there, all you guys in the postcast, all you guys supporting us. It does mean a lot to us and we do appreciate it. And we also appreciate our sponsors, including Farm to Fork, where you can go to Instagram, LockedOn.Senders. Make sure you sign up for this giveaway. It's all you have to do. It takes two seconds, and you'll be able to do uh, to be entered into the draw for tomorrow night. Why wouldn't you? And then on top of that, if you don't mind taking two seconds and going to Apple Podcasts and just leaving a quick review, it really helps the algorithm up and helps us produce even more content we have you covered on youtube with game day shorts before and after every single ottawa senators game the postcast and monday to friday we've got some great guests coming up tomorrow we've got of course it's wednesday a send central citizen for today we say goodbye for brandon pillar i'm ross levitan and this has been the locked on senators podcast your team every day